the world's indigenous people for this year 2009, 2019. And this year's theme is languages, indigenous languages. So this year is International Year of Indigenous Languages. We indigenous people of the organization and the indigenous people of Biafra are observing today along with all other organizations in the world, everywhere where there are indigenous people. Among the entire 350 million indigenous people scattered all over the world. Um, we are going to start off this program with prayers. Basically, most of our discussions today will be based on the theme of today's, this year's observation, which is indigenous languages. We will discuss, and hopefully, our discussion on this matter will last just a very short time. In the next one to two hours, uh, this uh, symposium will be over. Uh, thank you very much once again, I welcome you. Uh, please, uh, brother, you lead us in an open prayer. Thank you. Thank you for the program of today. Lord, we are committing it to the hand of God. We say, may you see us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for the survival of our nation. We pray for victory over our enemies. We pray equally, O oh God, that you sustain us and sustain our indigenous people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name.
we are registered with the United Nations as Indigenous Peoples Organization, IPO, and have attained the S ECOSOC status with three seats. With great pleasure, we celebrate this annual event in with the United Nations accord respect to all indigenous languages in the world and encourages all people to develop and speak their native languages. Language is an essential element of culture. It is undisputable that when a people lose their language, they will eventually lose their culture. Similarly, as can be evidenced by our colonial experience, when a people impose their language on others, they introduce their culture to the others through their language. Today, we have imbibed foreign culture from the Europeans and the Americans because of their language, because of their languages imposed on us. But can we really say that the colonial masters imposed their languages upon us? No, we cannot say that. Rather, it is fair to say that the colonial masters introduced their languages to us and we love their languages more than our own native languages. Today, some of us in the Igbo nation find it difficult to speak fluently in Igbo language and prefer to communicate more in English language. This trend must stop. I remember in the early 60s and 70s, when we were in the schools and we were forbidden by our teachers to speak in Igbo language in the classrooms, anyone speaking Igbo in the class, in the class was penalized and treated as a fool and unintelligent. With such mindset, we grew up and taught our own children to speak English at home. So, right from our homes in the villages, our children grew up speaking English rather than Igbo language. Those teachers in the 60s and 70s misled us and destroyed our love for Igbo language. Fortunately, the United Nations want all the indigenous languages of the peoples to be revived. It is the responsibility of the owners of the, langu of the language to develop their language to international standard. Today, there are two major international languages recognized by the United Nations, namely English and French, for business, contracts, and diplomatic negotiations. Other countries are working hard to get their own languages into the mainstream of the League of International Languages. The Chinese, the Germans, the Arabians, the Russians, etc., are working hard to export their languages to the whole world. The Igbo people are at the at an advantage position to make the Igbo language an international language because the Igbos live in all parts of the world. It is our responsibility to develop the Igbo language. You must have noticed that I use the words Igbo and Igbo. Igbo and Igbos in different contexts, one an adjective and the other a noun. In chapter four of my book, Biafra or Nigeria Presidents, What the Igbos Want, I explained the etymology and etiology of the Igbo language and would like to refer you to the work already done on that subject. We must start from the roots. We must start giving our children holy Igbo names as first names to change the psychological imbalance and confusion created by our <coughs> colonial masters who imposed foreign names on us as first names. Today, in the Igbo nation, it is common to find such names as Mr. John Chukuman Joko, Mr. Oliver Chikere Okonko, Mrs. Rose Oluchi Dike, Ms. Justina Ifoma Ibukwe, Etc. Etc. 
always having the foreign names as first names. I recommend this to change immediately so that the Igbo names shall be the first names even if you want to retain your foreign names. Those names should therefore be tra transposed as Mr. Chukoma, John Njoka, Njoko, Mr. Chikere, Oliver, Ukonko, Mrs. Oluchi, Rose, D.K., Mrs. Ebere Chuku, Rita, and Wong, Miss Informa, Justina, Ibukwe, etc., putting the Igbo names as first names. This has, so, this has some powerful psychological effects on our indigenous identity. We are glad to hear that some state governments in the Igbo nation have made the Igbo language compulsory in their schools. This is commendable. And we request all other governments in our land to do the same. We are everywhere in the world and can make the Igbo language an international language if we work hard. The Igbo language is our indigenous language being celebrated today by the United Nations along with other indigenous languages in the world. I call upon Igbo scholars to establish more NGOs to champion the development of the Igbo language to international standard. Yes, we can do it. Igbo Kwen. Yeah. Emeka John Chigozie Emeke Sini Chairman. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the address of the chairman of Mobin, chairman of uh, the customary government and the different project uh, barrister, Emeka John. Emeka Well, we don't, we don't really know about that John. <laughs> but uh, he just wanted to show us that he has an English name which he has suppressed. Yes. Yeah, I also had an English name myself. One that... Uh, most people that knew me from childhood would prefer to call. I had to remove it entirely because most people will not want to call my Igbo name as long as that name existed. My Igbo name is Obosulike and some people think it's tongue twisted so they don't want to call Obosulike. <laughs> so and my English name is Solomon. They say, ah, wise man Solomon. Uh -huh. And uh, but Obosulike is also wise man. I don't need uh, yeah, an English name to to be, wise. to be wise. Yes. So I had to now keep Solomon aside and take only what was making. So anyone who wants to copy had no option. Don't just like Swash Nigger. You can't you don't have any option but to call him Swash Nigger. Mm -hmm. Not mind the fact that his name is Tom Twisty. Now it's a popular name. So I think um, most of what we're going to discuss today will be based on this address. We will not be bringing in any other any other thing. Uh, what we have on the agenda there at symposium is just a way to guide us on the pattern of discussion so that we can take it step by step. Maybe we can take each of them for five minutes and then we move into the next item. Um, I just want to agree about the communique drafting. Can we ask the Secretary of Mobbing to act as communicate drafting personnel? Uh, that can be done. That, can be done. Uh, that doesn't need to be done here. It can be done after this time. But there's, uh, we will not have a secretary, so who will be the secretary? You can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, the first one there is what is language? What do we what can we say that language is generally mean? How can we define language? A means of communication, right? Yes. Which can be verbal, it could also be written. There are many means of communication, and most of them are not languages. Signs are there. But I think we will call them sign language. So they are the languages themselves. So whatever means of uh, communication that is understandable by the second party or any other party can be termed as uh, languages. So languages can be communicated orally, like we said or in written form. The written form are actually what we call symbols. Because those things, the, the, but the person we are communicating with is able to understand the symbols that we have written down. 
So once two or three people come together and they're able to understand the symbol, it becomes a written language. And language can start with thinking in our thoughts. Sometimes we, are, we speak to ourselves in thinking. While we are thinking, we are communicating in a particular language. And then after thinking, we may decide to write it down or to speak it out with our mouth. So you might be thinking of a, a particular story you have not yet told anybody. The next thing you do is to find somebody and tell the story. And then the next thing you do is to try to find a way to write it down. And then the next thing you do is to somebody else can read. So reading, writing, speaking, and thinking. These are connected to language development. And um, the language with which you communicate very often is usually the language with which you, uh, you think. So in what language do we really think as in as at the front? Do we really think in our indigenous language as it, as it is today? No. 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 Because whatever goes to the level where you start thinking in the particular language means the language has a very strong impact in your in your in your mind. That is the dominant language. So we have talked about language. Does anybody have any other contribution to make concerning the meaning of language? Actually, language is a part of the people's culture. That is what people are known for. And uh, this, uh, there was, there is something the chairman wrote here about uh, penalizing people for or children in the school for speaking the indigenous languages. Still today it is in existence. Some schools will still encourage penalizing people by paying something or by bullying them because they spoke uh, the native languages. And this I think should be tackled so as to raising the way we're supposed to raise it and act in the way we're supposed to act. Again, in uh, this production and manufacturing of things, we still think European. Because every communication about what we are producing is purely on uh, the European languages and, uh, and the culture. OK, so we'll, 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 we'll get to that level where we tackle the problems of the language. Mm -hmm. Now, when we are done with the definition, the second one is the issue of indigenous language or indigenous languages. Uh, what can we say about this? What are indigenous languages? Indigenous languages are languages of a particular people who have a very unique culture and tradition as different from a people who may be strangers or who may have come to join them from a different land. For a people to be called indigenous, they must have stayed in a particular place for such a long time and there are no other people identifiable as the owners of the land where they dwell. Yes. Most times we can call them the original dwellers of the land. That may be, there may be a people who were, who were there before they came, but we, we can't identify anybody who can claim ownership. ownership of the land where they grow? They become indigenous people. So the language of such a people is the indigenous language of such people. In the Biafran language, we have so many indigenous languages. We have the Igbo language, which is the language of the larger population of Biafrans. We have the Efik language, we have a Jaw language, we have a Bibio language, we have a Sekiri. And many others. When you get to places like uh, Cross River State, Takalaban language, or Krika language, you get to uh, Akwa Ibom, you find so many languages there. Cross River, you have so many languages. Uh, Delta, you have so many languages. Rivers, you have so many languages. And even variants of Igbo languages. Is, uh, we have variants. There are Igbo languages where they have, they have varieties, like, like Igbo language, for instance, which is just a variant of Igbo language itself, and many others. So we have indigenous languages, and these languages are languages spoken by the people which they regard as the dominant language in their place, the language of their culture, and the language of their tradition. Like I said earlier, we have so many of such languages within Biafra land. And uh, these are the language with which we are identified as different from 
the English language or any other language that was we are brought in by foreigners, by that we are brought in by our colonizers, that we are brought in by people who were not part of our original culture. So uh, we now will have to discuss a little bit about the experience of the Biafran indigenous languages. We have had a long experience, just like my brother and sister here have said. So we will now go into discussing some of these experiences. Let me just uh, kick it off. Uh, the, the chairman of uh, the, our chairman himself also mentioned this, this address when he spoke about the days when it was not normal for a school teacher to punish children for speaking what was called vernacular. That is a language that is not acceptable in the classroom. There were also days when in the Catholic Church, there were days when in the Catholic Church, the only language of worship there was Latin. A language that was totally foreign to the indigenous people. These languages were brought in, they were introduced, most times without consent to the feelings or the traditions of the people. Most times our languages were regarded as things that were inferior. That was the reason why it was brought into, into the schools. So now when people blame the Africans, even the United Nations itself, dominant of which are those seven people that actually dominated our languages, and cause our languages to fizzle out. When these people come up down and begin to blame us for abandoning our language, you begin to wonder whether they really know what they're talking about. Since they themselves were the cause of the loss of the language itself. Here we saw that the two languages are set up in the United Nations as most widely spoken was were French and, and English. Why? Because they went around dominating countries, controlling them, and enforcing their language on those countries. I think we'll take a little pause here now so that we can move into another uh, dimension of the of the discussion. From your opinion, what has it been like, uh, DJ? Yes, um, I wanted to, you know, like you mentioned, even from the chairman's um, um, angle, he mentioned when they started, you know, late 60s and early 70s. The thing has even degenerated to, you know, like for instance, you enter in some offices where you have your little brothers, you know, and you want to communicate, you want to speak in Igbo language, you know, communicate with them in Igbo language. And what you will hear is that don't speak vernacular. She understand. And that person is an Igbo person. Or every effort, you know, you put, you put in, you know, trying to discuss with him in Igbo language, he will just put you off. I don't know if it is the fear, you know, of the because the Europeans are, are, no, are no longer here. And even the Europeans did not force us, like the chairman said. You see, the thing is that I think we became inferior. We look at our, our indigenous languages as being too inferior. And uh, we see ourselves speaking it as being timid, she understand, and unintelligent or uneducated. A situation where you see your big brother, you know, occupying a big office, in a you know a big uh, company, and we want to communicate in Igbo language, we show him that and say, "Don't speak in vernacular." And that thing is more, you know, with us, because Yorubas, you know, they prefer, you know, speaking their language. A situation where even a medical doctor in Yoruba, you know, you you want to speak English, he will tell you no, boy English. She understand? I don't understand English. He will force you to speak in his or her indigenous language. And outside people, the same thing. The only place where we have this problem more is with our people, you know, the Biafrans. It's also with the Kwere people, with the Shekiri people, with the Ka people. They prefer to speak in English than speaking, you know, their indigenous languages. All right, thank you. Hey, yes, more opinion. Yeah, exactly. That is the experience we have here in our this part of this country. Because when I was in the in the service, I went to I served in, in River State. And there there was a lot of adoption of uh, this language. They don't even speak pure English. 
the has the the broken and the broken is uh, so hard swallowed and uh, made something else so here that place there was experience I got I served with the uh, the houses and the universe and they always speak their own language so there I told my people that uh, today must be the end of us discussing in English language because these people love themselves so much that they speak their own language even if you're there it doesn't matter you can go to places they don't mind about you but we Igbos we like to carry people along whatever we are discussing and actually that is one of the problems that made other people not to learn Igbo language as we we stick to our own language and speak it in the presence of our visitors then they will they will try to learn it all right so, yeah. no i just wanted to Summit of North, you can not precise it, you know, and then um, going into the markets. Uh, somebody you know that can understand what you are saying, how much is it, just shout back, trench. So we were actually forced to speak, learn our language and speak it, even if you're cutting it and joining it, you know, but at least you will come you know, to buy meat, to buy pepper, right in the market there. You must speak in their dialect, otherwise, you know, you can't work. it's just not going to work for you that day. You know, so just what he said is here is the right thing. You know, they force us actually to others seem to because they keep speaking their language, you are forced to learn it. But we are busy, you know, trying to carry everybody along. We are not you know making any conscious self force that this evil, you are in any state, you will learn it. You will talk to me in evil. You will speak it, you will learn to speak it. So I totally agree with her. Even our mothers, she understand. Even our mothers, they don't speak Igbo language to their children. A situation where the, the children goes to school, they speak English. They come back to the house, they speak English. English. And you know, they go out to play, they speak English. Same English. The same English. When and where will they stand up? At times we hear our children say, "Yo, wa, yo, wa." Try to also the answers. <laughs> <laughs> to learn the answers in our own land. It is okay. All right. Um, uh, this, this is the experience we've had with regards to the languages, our indigenous languages, and its development. Uh, it appears as if others, we all were colonized, but after colonization, others came out of colonialism, but we remained colonized. In fact, we prefer to be colonized. The there is something about colonization that affected us, our psyche, very badly. We became inferior. We, everything about us, we were all demonized. Our culture was demonized. We were told that all our gods and deities were evil. evil. We were told that our land was evil. We were told that our water was evil. Even our native cows. Everything about, our, about, about what we have locally, we are all evil. We accepted it and began to worship those who came to visit us. Currently, the Chinese language is being sold very strongly. Chinese are establishing their centers in almost all the tertiary institutions in Nigeria, teaching us Chinese. We buy their product, we also speak their language and buy the products. And we all Igbos are traders. We also have our products. But we prefer to sell our products in English language rather than selling in Igbo language. And that has affected our growth very, very, very badly. The next thing we, we are supposed to discuss now is interrelationship among Biafra languages. Where I would introduce this as, as this. Some people might think that we should have started this program and this symposium in Igbo language. But mind you, the indigenous people of Biafra have so many languages. The IPOB is not an Igbo language uh, territory. The Igbos might be dominant. We might, we might have more, more population than the others, but we are not the only one in Biafra land. And we must give respect to those who share the same land with us. There's a lot of interest in Nigeria today, concern we have in Nigeria today. Fundamental concern is that the Britons imposed Nigeria on us. 
without our choice. Britain imposed their religion on us without our choice. Britain imposed their language on us without our choice. They imposed their, their style of, their of education without our choice. They imposed their medicine on us so that if you go to a native doctor, they will say you're going to see devil. <laughs> but their own doctors are the ones that are accepted by God. Everything that we do, we are demonized. So, that is why we are opting out of the system that Nigeria operates. We are asking for justice from Nigeria. But why we ask for this justice? We must also be careful not to appear to dominate those who are going to share this. We have with us. Because, yeah. that because if, you form, if you if we have our, our, our state, which, which is coming as Biafra land, everything about the way that country operates, the state operates, must be a joint decision of the Igbos, the Efix, the Isekiris, the Ejos, and all those that make up the Biafra country. You cannot come up one day and tell everybody that you will speak Igbo language. If you do it, you will be like the Britons. Yeah, you will be like the Fulanese. You will be like the other ones who have been imposing themselves on us as indigenous people. So that is the reason why when we have a joint program of the indigenous people of Biafra, we use a language that is understandable until such a time when we can jointly sit together and adopt one language as acceptable among all Biafrans. I remember quite vividly that during the First Republic, during the pre-colonial, the pre-colonial, the pre-independence, and immediately after independence, the Igbo language was spoken all over the old eastern region, which is, of course, the Biafra land. It was spoken among the Ogonis in River State, spoken among the Ejos in Bayasa State and River State, spoken among yes. everywhere, everybody in the eastern region spoke the Igbo language. And it was compulsory. But thereafter, when the states were being created, some people, persons, some of the reasons they gave against the Igbos for not wanting to be in Biafra with the Igbos, those who opposed Biafra talking about, like Esther and so on, was that Igbos dominated them, forced themselves on, upon their, their territory. That they were forced to speak Igbo language in school, and we are forced to, to, to study Igbo culture in school. We, we wouldn't want to build another country where people will be unhappy about the way this language and the culture we are formulated. So we have, we have to be extremely careful about the way in which we interrelate the interrelationship between the different tribes within the Biafran tribe, the, 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 the Biafran territories. Please let, let us uh, make further contribution on this issue of interrelationship among the tribes and languages in the Biafran territory. I think, um, just like you said, Biafra is still in the making. And uh, we are condemning the Britain uh, for imposing their language, imposing their culture, their pride, everything on us. Uh, I should agree with you that by the time we get Biafra, you know, we can sit together, bring these other people, the Shekiris, the Jaws, we come, we come together and we agree and adopt a particular language. If we all agree that it's going to be Shekri language, all good and fine. Beautiful. If we agree that it's going to be Bo language, all good and fine, we'll start, you know, teaching and learning. Developing, just the, language. developing the language. Just like we, we, we started learning English, we started teaching English, we started developing English, and today we are all speaking English. If after we've gotten Biafra, and we decide that Igbo language is going to be a unifying language, we we'll begin to develop it. But for now, we should not impose any of these languages on anybody. We will continue in English language until we're able to, you know, restore the Africa. Stabilize the Africa. Yeah, stabilize the Africa. Then we can uh, make a choice. Okay. Actually, uh, I thank God for free as the Africans to choose a particular language will not mean that the other languages may die off. It's just that people, when we gather together, we gather to speak what we can understand and what we can hear. So what we are agreeing today basically is that our diverse languages must remain alive. Alive, yeah. While their friends must continue to speak with themselves, to discuss together, to adopt a language 
that will be used as language of communication, communication. among all their friends. Yes. The relationship among all their friends must almost take cognizance of the fact that whenever we be together, we have so many people. So that these languages can work together, these dialects can work together without any grudges and without, uh, without uh, anybody crying out. Now, the next thing I want us to talk about um, uh, as we draw to a close is the issue of the potentials of the Igbos to spread their language. Not just only to speak our language, but to spread it. When people travel, they travel with their language. When Britons were coming to Africa, they did not come to Igbo language and Igbo land and learn Igbo language. They came to Igbo language and imposed their language on the Igbos. They did not visit uh, the Aousas to learn Aousa language. They visited the Aousas and imposed their language. Now, some of the widest traveled people in Africa, in the world, are Igbos. Dear friends, why are we not exporting our own language? Why are we rather grabbing what belongs to others happily? rather than giving out what we have to them. When are we going to start? Your culture cannot be disseminated outside your language. It is not possible to disseminate your culture without your language. That's one mistake most, most people make. No matter how you try to interpret your culture in English language, it can never work. There are many concepts in Igbo language you cannot express in English. They have no meaning in English language, no matter how you're trying to give them meaning. So the only language you can use to, to put the meaning is your indigenous uh, language. And that's what makes it uh, very peculiar. So we are calling on all our people to begin to use our language as a way of communication, as a way of disseminating information. All the indigenous languages, I'm very happy that all the cultures of in Biafra land, all the different tribes, I even develop Bibles in their own languages. Most of them are beginning to have church services in their own language, local languages. Some of them are even beginning to teach their language in their own territory. And I pray that this will continue to, to happen. Amen. So that we sustain our language and make it stronger. So do we have any other contributions, any other comments to make on the issue of our languages, our indigenous language? No, just like you said, we are business people and we travel all over the world. We should travel with our language. Um, there is one of our sisters, Amarachi Atama. I don't know if you know her. Yes. She has been going from one country to the other, you know, trying to uh, uh, um, carry our language, our culture. And I will um, really plead with our people, wherever they are, you know, whatever they do, even in a, in a, you see, we we'll start. We we'll start from our respective homes, from our respective homes. Teach your children. Allow your children to go to school and learn English language. I have a friend, you know, she's um, from Oka, you know. In, in her house, her children don't speak English. They go to school, they speak English language. But as soon as they get to the gates of their house, they drop English language and they pick up their uh, indigenous language, which is Igbo language. And today, these children can communicate, you know, anywhere in Igbo land. They speak English very well, you know, and they speak Igbo very well. I should encourage every parent, every mother, because it's only the mothers. I mean, of course, you know that the fathers mm -hmm. will always go out, they will go to fetch uh, maybe what the children will eat and they The mothers should continue to teach their children bring them up in Igbo language. And those of them that travel all over the world, they should travel with our language. My son went to Russia, he studied in Russia, and he told me that even in Russia, if you speak English, you're on your own, they won't understand you. And they will force you, whether you like it or not, to learn their own language. Learn their own language. So, like those of us who are in our area market, those of us who are in the O2, uh, O2, 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 O2 market, O2. 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 So if the Yorubas come there, even if the Europeans come there to uh, uh, transact business, 
we should, you know, communicate in our language. By the time they, they have no alternative, they have no option, they will be forced to begin to speak or to begin to learn our language. That is just it. Okay. Um, All right, I did my, Yeah, my little contribution to this particular topic will be that we have the best, one of the best languages on earth. Igbo language, dialect is so sweet. It's so interesting, it's so fast. You know, that it, 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 you can, you can do so much more than just the English, you know, with it, than the English we are talking about. Just like uh, the Zulu just um, narrated. Igbo is so wide and if you travel to Siberia, actually the ends of earth if you ask me, I bet you there will be an Igbo man there. Now, the funny thing is that everybody will be speaking English, but you know you say, na Igbonye, Igbonye, you have made a brother, you have made a friend for life. For life, you know. So why can we not, you know, make this la our, lang our language, Igbo in particular, our indigenous language forever that you do anyway, you know, a daily thing, part of what we are. Instead of trying to keep borrowing, you go to China, you start, you, must, you start speaking Chinese, you come back to Nigeria here even, you know, you're speaking Chinese right here, you know, where you should, you know, do your, uh, encourage your, your people to speak your, your own uh, indigenous language. So, you know, we should really export our indigenous languages wherever we are, wherever we go. Thank you. All right, thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 You see that our musicians, our musicians help in this uh, aspect. When I went to to Rivers first, I had the Igbo Christian songs going on almost all the shops. Then I thought that they are Igbo, pure Igbos. I came to that place, they said, no, we are not Igbo. So, but why do you like this music? He said it is so sweet. When we play this thing that it is as if so God has come to yeah. has yeah. come yeah. to yeah. them. There in Yoruba land, I had that same experience. same experience. And you can see that even the Yoruba musicians, the some of the outside musicians, they do use Igbo language in some but of their music. But they in collaboration with our musicians. Our musicians that yes. 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 So if we can speak it as the musicians as transporting our distance, I think it will be better for us. All right. Thank you very much. I think uh, we are coming to the end of this uh, discussion, of this symposium, we've all agreed that there is, it is very, very necessary for us to reverse back and begin to build our language. The Biafran project cannot actually be actualized without the formidable language. Yes. We cannot, you cannot actualize, in fact, at a time in the Chinese revolution, the Chinese leader then, Mao Zedong, he had to go back into a cultural, what he called a cultural revolution reversing back to the Chinese language. In fact, most, most of us don't know it was, was that even the Chinese and the Japanese were at the time endangered by the encroachment of the English language into their languages. And they felt that their languages were being actually, actually wiped out. At a point, the Chinese, the Japanese had to consciously begin to put an end to the use of English language in their territory. And the Chinese themselves, what we have now as Chinese culture, is actually a renaissance because at the time the Chinese culture was actually going down very badly yeah. because no one was speaking Chinese culture they were actually also feeling inferior like the rest of us are doing now but the Chinese today are beginning to export their language all over the world and as you buy their, their product you also buy their, you, you, you also buy their language um, when you see a Chinese product and you read the manual in, the one written in English language you will end up destroying whatever the manual is talking about if you buy something for electronics and you read the manual in English language, you will, you will get lost. Because it's usually very badly translated. Because they can't speak good English. But you need to understand their own writing and their own language to be able to uh, appreciate, use their product. So we are also producers. We also begin to write in our own language. Um, so that other people can also struggle to read what we have. Thank you very much. We'll come to the end of this program.